Good morning. Good morning. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, who enkindled in the heart of blessed Maria, Marie Rose de Rocher the flame of ardent charity and a great desire to cooperate in the mission of the Church as a teacher, grant us that same act of love so that in responding to the needs of the world today, we may lead our brothers and sisters to the blessedness of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading of from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, you heard of my former way of life in Judaism, how I persecuted the Church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it and progressed in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my race, since I was even more zealot for my ancestral traditions. But when he, who from my mother's womb had set me apart and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him to the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. Rather, I went to Arabia and then returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to confer with Cephas and remained with him for 15 days. But I did not see any other of the apostles only James, the brother of the Lord. As to what I am writing to you, behold, before God, I am not lying. Then I went up into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown personally to the churches of Judah that are in Christ. They only kept hearing that the one who once was persecuting us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. So they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Although we know from the scriptures that both Martha and Mary were adults. When we hear this passage, you get the impression that they've been having this conversation since they were little. Basically, it's the conversation that every parent has who has more than one child, I would believe, tell him to help me. Tell her to help me. He's not doing this. She's not doing this. And I'm sure that Martha was not happy with Jesus' answer. The Lord said to her, when Martha said, tell her to help me, the Lord said, Martha, you're anxious and worried about many things. Mary has chosen the better part. You can just see Martha. <laughs> Again. Again. What's this say to us? 
it's not a commentary on one being better than the other. Because ultimately we know that both parts are important. You cannot leave all of the details in the wind. Nor can you be so detail-oriented that you miss the bigger picture. How many times have you visited somebody and at some point in the visit you've said to them, I've come to visit you. Stop fidgeting. Sit down and let's talk. But I just have to get you... Sit down. Sit down. So what is this calling us to do? I think it's calling us to look at all that is required of us both the details and the bigger picture, and to put ourselves in a situation where we address both. And more importantly, to realize that it is up to each of us to make our own way as we address both. This is not a comparative. I'm doing it better than him. She's doing it worse than me. We are called to make our own choices. Now, just as surely we are called to accept the responsibility for the choices that we make. But we are to make our own choices. If this does anything for us, it reminds us that our choices, whatever they may be, are resulting from our unique vision of the world. And someone making different choices may have a different vision. But there are fundamentals that have to be included in all of our choices. Our saint today, Rosemary Drosher, was an educator. And she calls us to form our consciences well. Because our choices have to go beyond our own personal thoughts. They have to be formed by truth. They have to be formed by God's message, the teachings of the scriptures, the teachings of the church, the teachings of the magisterium. We're not free just to make it up. But once we have been formed... We have a duty to act. We have a duty to follow that rightly formed conscience. And it may take us in places we don't want to go, places that are difficult. I am not unaware that we're coming up to an election. And our challenge as faithful citizens is to vote with an informed conscience. To read what the church teaches and what it professes about the issues and then to apply that to our votes.
We can't be little kids. We have difficult decisions to make, and we can't point to those around us and say, look at them, look at them. What am I doing? What am I called to do? How am I called to decide? Our relationship with God and our understanding of what God asks of us has to be the filter through which everything else is done. There is no second filter. People will try to tell us that there are second and third and fourth filters but there is one. If you look at Paul and his life, what you understand about Paul's personality was that he was a zealot. And when he was killing Christians, he was zealous in doing that. When he converted, he became zealous as a convert. Our hearts have to be on fire with an understanding of God's call to us. I encourage you to read what the church teaches. The USCCB Bishop's Document on Faithful Citizenship the Pennsylvania Catholic Conference's statements and our own diocesan statements. We can't look to our left and to our right. It is within us. A formed conscience is our strongest ally. So as we continue today, let us ask for the intercession of blessed Rose Marie, Marie Rose de Rocher, for the grace we need to bring the Holy Spirit into our thoughts and in our actions so that once we have connected with the Lord, we can do what he asks of us. Let us present our needs to our loving God, confident God will hear them. For the people of God, may the Spirit of Christ bring unity and peace to every heart and relationship. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the world, may God help guide our priorities in protecting and serving one another especially those most vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For those who suffer from mental illness or emotional distress, and for all who love and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For this community of faith, May the love of Christ continue to help us grow in faith and charity as we bear witness of the gospel to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For those who have died, may Jesus welcome them into the kingdom with open arms. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Loving God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those we hold within our hearts. We ask that you answer them in the name of Jesus, your Son, and our Lord. Amen.
Fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Blessed Marie Rose de Rocher, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other here and across the way the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
For Holy Communion today, I'll give communion to this side, then this side, and then the transepts. Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, but that by the example of the blessed Marie Rose de Rocher, 
Bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a good day.